The 650th edition of the MMA Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Sign up with promo code MMASGPN to score up to $1,000 in bonus cash. And we're also brought to you by Rhythm. Get your seven-day free trial today by going to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash R-I-T-H-M-M. And last but not least, make sure to enter the free roll football contest. Up to $3,500 in prizes are up for grabs. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash free roll to enter today. I do know DeGenerinos. Welcome to episode 650 of the MMA Gambling Podcast, the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, dedicated to the mighty mouse himself, Demetrius Johnson, who retired this past weekend, stealing all the shine away from Matt Schnell, who also pretended to retire, I think. He put his gloves in the ring, right? Yeah, at the very least. So, uh, Anyhow, we can't wait to see you guys. Maybe, maybe they'll fight each other next. Um, <laughs> no, I think Mighty Mouse might actually retire for real. We'll, we'll see. He said he's <laughs> retiring from MMA, too. It's worth oh, noting. Okay. And like okay. with 1FC right. having you know, Muay Thai, Jiu-Jitsu, all that kind of stuff, I'm sure he'll be like grappling Mikey Musumeci in like no time as long as that dude's lungs recover. Mike. Mikey Musumichi. That's Gumby Vreeland, everyone. Everyone say hi to Gumby. Hi, Gumby. What's up, guys? Um, <laughs> so let's dedicate this episode to Matt Schnell then, because uh, Mike Musk really, really is not retiring, right? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. Matt, Matt Schnell, uh, do, do we really want to dedicate an episode to Matt no, Schnell? No. Yeah. He, no. he was one of my rare losses. I believe I went uh, nine and three and I hit a two plus 215 dog. And you went, what, eight and four? And you hit eight a and four and a 215 dog. Yeah. Not Taco bad. Padilla, dude. That elbow. I know this isn't a recap episode. We shouldn't be recapping. Yeah, but uh, we do whatever let's we want. Give show. a quick, quick pat on the back for uh, Taco mm-hmm. Padilla because that dude's elbow, nasty. Uh, and yeah, he looked real good. Um, yeah. And. What what regional event are we covering today? I don't think we even pre-productive. Is this LFA? This is LFA. Oh, we nice. Do LFA first. We usually do it chronologically, and LFA is the first one coming down the pipe that we've not covered already. Of course, we already covered uh, tomorrow's contender series. Dropped it early for you on Friday, so we figured uh, during contender series season we shall be a Monday to Friday podcast, just like Ham and Egg or nine to five or uh, Monday to Friday, um, and then once contender series is done, we'll, we'll probably go back to the normal. Sunday to Friday or whatever. Sunday, Sunday Thursday. to Thursday, right? Right. But so there you go. All all that is out of the way. Um, and today is all about LFA. I'm rhyming already. We just got started, so we'll talk more UFC on uh, Wednesday because they have a, an event with about five different names uh, um, that we're going to be covering. Riyadh uh, season. <laughs> no UFC 306. Riyadh season. Noche UFC. We'll be covering uh, <laughs> in a few days. That's so ridiculous. I'm glad no one's buying tickets to it, too. So take that, UFC. All right. <laughs> Before we move on, hopefully you're checking out the Bosses podcast. The, the aforementioned sport, the Sports Gambling Podcast, they are back picking every NFL game against the spread like they've done since 2011. So check them out, YouTube, podcast catcher of choice, all that good stuff. And, of course, please make sure to enter. Oh, actually, our free roll contest, you probably can enter, I'm thinking, but you're going to be, uh- like, behind. Yeah, I think um, you could still enter. You're just going to yeah. have to be extra good now. Exactly. Uh, so check it out. We're giving it away up to $3,500 in cash. Is up for grabs. Sign up at sportsgamblingpockets.com slash free roll at sportsgamblingpockets.com slash free roll. We got a Friday the 13th event we're covering. Ooh, are you into superstition at all, Gumby? No. no <laughs> neither am I. Gumby and I are, are logical men I'm here. Not, not, a spook, it, not a spooky guy. No. Oh, speaking of spooky season, one of our neighbors already has decorations up for spooky season, Gumby. Beautiful, it's September. Beautiful, beautiful. I saw it on September the 8th. So, yeah. Yeah. Spooky season. Don't you live with a spooky season person? I do. I live with a spooky yeah. season person. Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. She's yeah. trying to make a whole bunch of other small spooky uh, season people. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> well, yeah, well uh, little people are always in the spooky season. So, that's not fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So, hopefully, it's not a spooky card. Is it says in the poster it's for the oh no it doesn't see I misread that they misled me it says LFA flyweight belt yeah. you think when you when you look over that you think oh it's for the title but no it's not anyhow this is LFA 192 Clamaco versus Diaz Santa Cruz California is where it's taking place September the 13th which would be Friday hey and since it's California I'll be able to actually get fighter payout info which i will post on my substack money mma.substack.com like i did with the bellator ones from this past weekend so this is going down santa cruz california kaiser 
Pern- Permanente Arena. Yeah, they're a, sp- they're a sponsor of the Atlanta Braves, so I hear their ads really? all the time. Kaiser, Kaiser Permanente. Who's, Kaiser Permanente. I have no idea what they do. What, they just say this is brought to you by Kaiser Permanente. Really? Life I mean, insurance? Never, Life yeah, insurance more than really? likely. That's what everybody that uh, sponsors things are. Custom care coverage just for you. Yeah, it looks like yeah. it. Uh, Life insurance. There you go. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Easy. They run the world, those insurance people. All right. Um, Friday the 13th, like I said, 7 p.m. Eastern, UFC Fight Pass. We've got 13 fights. We're breaking down the five that Gumby deems worthiest. And then uh, we'll get you the, as uh, as per usual, the lightning round at the very end. So let's uh, kick things off with a couple of fighters. You, if you're hardcore, you probably know. Daniel James Allen versus Lucas Clay. They are fighting at lightweight on the main card. Three five-minute rounds if they need it. No odds. At least I have not found any odds as of this recording. Same as you. Yeah, I haven't seen any yet. Okay. Nope. We'll start with Cassius Clay, 10 and 3, one knockout, four submissions. He's never been finished in a fight. Four and two in LFA, lost win, lost win over his last. That would be four by my math. He won his last fight via submission. He used to fight at welterweight, three years younger than Allen. Allen is 5 and 0 with two knockouts. This is his LFA debut. 1 and 0 contender series. He won as a big underdog. He was one of the guys that Dana White said, oh, get more experienced, kid, right? No, he said, he I'm not looking for 32 year old men mm. who are uh, 4 0. And it was like, right. well, you know what you signed to Contender was, Series was a 32-year-old man who's 4-0. I was just going to say, <laughs> I, I would counter with that. Then why did you have me on the show? Because uh, how could he have done any better? He he won as a plus. Well, I mean, he didn't, he didn't look yeah, great. Yeah. I mean, it was a pretty boring fight. Uh, right. But against a good opponent. It was Jacoby yeah. Jones. Uh, yeah. Toe. Big toe. Big toe. Um, yeah. So I guess Allen's just isn't a savage, but that's okay. Um, still undefeated. Used to fight at middleweight, an inch taller than Clay. And that's all I got for you. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, Allen beating Jacoby Jones, who was the LFA champ at the time. It's kind of weird because right. now he's making his LFA debut and he's not the champ, but with a win over, well, a guy who used to be the champ, right? Because yeah. Keegan Genrich has since taken it from Jacoby Jones. Um, it, it's weird because like Lucas Clay, tons more experience, right? 10 and 3. Uh, you got Daniel James Allen who beat the former champ and has a win on contender series. So like, I feel like Daniel James Allen probably has to be the favorite, uh, both being undefeated, having the contender series thing behind him, even though he's got way less experience. So I'm going to say, you know, that way less experience keeps the number low enough, like maybe negative 165. Um, and if this stays south of two, and even if it ekes into the twos for that matter, I'm all over Daniel James Allen here. This is maybe one of my favorite spots of the whole week. Um, I, I love the fact that, you know, like his one two against Jacoby Jones made it so Jones couldn't get close to him, right? Like he just kept splitting the guard apart. Um, he cut angles so that it was like hard for Jones to like stop what he was doing, you know, big toe just kept eating shots, eating shots, eating shots. And then when it got late in the fight and Daniel James Allen was like, I don't know, maybe tiring a little bit. His wrestling game was pretty damn good too. Like he wound up, you know, getting a couple of takedowns late. And I was like, damn it. It, it looks like he's super well-rounded now again, you know, it, there was never a time where he really went for it and he doesn't look like he's got tons of finishing ability necessarily, but I don't know necessarily that that matters against Lucas clay. He's a guy who, like, look, he, he wants to do his jujitsu. That's what he wants to do all the time. The guy's got two buggy choke finishes, uh, which is ridiculous to begin with. You know, having one is ridiculous. Having two yeah. is really crazy. He wanted to call him the Claymores, by the way. Get that? Uh, instead yes. of the buggy choke. He tried to rename it, uh, and it didn't work. Uh, which, you know, good bit on his part. But, like, you know, arm bars off of his back, buggy chokes from bottom side control, all that kind of stuff. Like, that's all well and good until you're fighting somebody who, first of all, has probably better wrestling than you and can keep it on the feet and, you know, is a much better striker. And B, if he does decide to take him down, like, I trust Daniel James Allen's submission defense based on what I've seen from him, that he'll stay away from, like, the, you know, the funky stuff Lucas Clay does. And, and like, after hitting two buggy chokes, you have to imagine anybody who fights him is in training camp making sure he knows the defense to a buggy choke, which is just like flare your elbows and put a little pressure on his hips and they can't lock it in in the first place. So, uh, yeah, I think Daniel James Allen that goes in there with submission defense uh, and absolutely blast him on the feet. So hopefully uh, we're looking at him in the 100s, even low twos. I like him on the money line. And if it doesn't work out for him, he could always be a serial killer because he already yeah, goes by names. three names, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> All right. Um, because that's yeah, no one has ever clued in. It's people with three names are the only serial killers, right? You gotta you gotta watch out for them. <laughs> it's true. Especially you... three first names. That's oh, wild. yeah, that's right. This guy, this guy is dangerous. Um, <laughs> all right, we're moving on to next. These people only have a couple names. Um, David 
Solor, Solor Zano, Alan Bagoso. So we got U.S. versus Brazil. Actually, if a Brazilian's involved, he ha- does not just have two names. I'm sure he has a million different names. Yeah, I mean, Bagoso is probably <laughs> his second name too. Exactly. <laughs> uh, his nickname is Mini, which is a which is a fun one. He is five foot five, so um, that is Mini. Uh, he is. Both my kids are bigger than five foot five at this point, so uh, I wouldn't tell Mr. Bogosa that to his. I wouldn't say to his. No, face, he's built like Sean Shirk, so like yeah. I'd watch out. <laughs> yeah, Muscle Shark himself. All right, Minnie is eight three and one, three knockouts, three submissions. Never been finished in a fight. Four and two in LFA. One and two over his last three. Two and two over his last four. He did win his last fight. That was back last August, actually two Augusts ago now, August twenty third, twenty twenty three. I mean, uh, oh one in contender series. Do you know who he lost to? Uh Fareed Basharat. Wow, you do know amazing. Or was it Javid? It was Fareed Bashra, right? Yeah, it, they're blending together now, even worse than they were before. Yes, I think it was Fareed. Yeah, He's a good was... one, right? Ferocious Fareed. No, Javid is the better Javid, one. Javid, see, I told you they're blending yeah, together. Javid's on. the better one. I think he uh, lost to the worst of the two Bashra brothers. Okay. <laughs> Bogoso is used to fight at uh Flyweight 2014 Pro on May debut. Solo Zano, the silent killer. This episode is all about killers. Uh, six and one with two knockouts. He's been knocked out once himself. One on LFA. One his last fight. Five inches taller than Bogoso, as most people are. Um, I th- so I think Bogoso will probably be a slight favorite here, uh, due to the contender series experience. Been around high profile fights a little bit longer than Solo Zano, unless Solo Zano, I'm pretty sure came from Kabache, which I guess. Yeah, I, I think they just it, not that it's not high level like LFA is. Like it, it is probably you know, nipping at its heels, but like at the same time, it doesn't get the airtime no. uh, because their, their owner is kind of a idiot when it comes to that. Um, like they won't put any other events on tapology until it's like ready to be fight time. And, and uh, you know, books never offer it because they don't even know who's fighting. So like, as a result, it gets way less popularity, way less airtime. And uh, we don't cover it either. That means and we, and then we don't cover it. So yeah, like yeah. he's had high level experience, but I think as a result, uh, you're going to see Bogoso slight favorite. I'll say like negative negative one forty five, uh, And I'm going to go with Bogoso here. I think uh, if you watch solar Zano, First of all, I really do like the hook combinations he puts together when he backs up two hooks together. Sometimes they'll go head, head, and then the last hook to the body, like in a, a three piece. I really like what he does there. His hands are a little low for me, but outside of that, like it, it, his striking looks really good. His takedown defense is awful. Uh, it's truly, truly bad. And Bogoso isn't necessarily, I, I guess this is why I think the line will be close too. Bogoso isn't necessarily a guy who loves to shoot takedowns. Um, like he, he's he'll, he'll strike on the feet all day and just throw leg kicks and kicks to the body and stuff like that. But I think that in this fight, knowing that Solorzano is so bad there and knowing you know you're five five and what is Solorzano is quite a bit taller, right? Five ten. Yeah, he's five ten. Knowing that there's that reach advantage and and Solorzano kind of uses those long limbs a little bit, I think we're gonna see Bogoso wrestle just a touch more. He should be able to get a takedown with no problem. Um, and even if he doesn't, like I also like the power advantage he probably has here. You know, I, I mentioned he's got kind of a Sean Shirk looking build. Um, he's a big old dude and he throws to the body pretty well. So I, I could see him having some success on the feet. And then if he is getting frustrated with the range, I think we just see him bulldoze in, hit the easiest double leg you've seen, and then just like grind out a couple of rounds here. So I'm going to go with Bogoso, thinking small favorite. All right. Small favorite for Mr. Bogoso. Um, all right. Before we move on, ladies and gentlemen, going to tell you about underdog fantasy gummy's not in on any the official. Well, we don't, we don't have official odds yet. Maybe he's in on a dog, but he's definitely in on underdog. Fantasy underdog fantasies pick them gives you a chance to win a thousand times your entry. That's enough to make anyone interested. Uh, the NFL is back, and there are a ton of pick them specials to get you started. You can now use specials and boosts and all flex entries. Gumby, do you have a play for us for sure. Mon- Monday? Yeah, we got Monday Night Football tonight. So if you're listening to this before watching the 49ers, get in on the higher than on Brock Purdy's passing yards, especially with uh, Christian McCaffrey banged up a little bit. It looks like he's going to play. But even with him banged up a little bit, I think they rely a little bit more on the passing game. So give me a little bit of Brock Purdy. You just mentioned two of my fantasy players there, Gumby. You, you are you uh you're Brock Brocking it this year? Yes. Hopefully <laughs> neither of those gentlemen get shot. But you never know. San Francisco. One, one just got one shot. just got arrested on the way into the stadium. Did you see oh, that? Oh wow. <laughs> no, San Francisco's a mess, eh? Oh no, that that one's Miami. Miami okay. got arrested on the way. Yeah, that, that's yeah. that's not surprising either, right? <laughs> um, and yeah, sign up with our promo code. We're talking about our fantasy still. That would be MMA SGPN. Claim your special pick and first time deposit offer up to a thousand bucks in bonus cash. MMA 
SGPN is the code. Underdogfantasy.com is the place to go. So who got arrested and why? Uh, Tyreek Hill it said uh, traffic yeah. violation. I don't know why uh, that gets you arrested yeah. in Miami. Uh, I'm glad I don't live there. Uh, you know, there might it be seems some to be other... a thing, though, with there you Americans. Be... You guys there seem to be... get arrested for driving things often. That's, That's what really happened to uh, Scotty Scheffler, too, yes. on the way in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's not really a thing here. We don't really get arrested well, for good driving infraction. Well, at least I don't. Who may, maybe people do. Who's to say? Um, only if you have a bunch of guns and drugs in your car, then you get arrested. But anywho, third from the top. <laughs> we're already at third from the top. Ian Thompson from Australia. I, I believe on another show I called someone Australian when they were in New Zealand. Oh, no. Did yeah, you get, did you get... No one yelled at me yet. Oh, you didn't get any guff? No, no, no guff. There, there's an expression <laughs> people do not say enough anymore. Let's bring it back. No guff yet. Uh, no, guff. no guff episode. Israel Delgado <laughs> from the United States of America. Three five minute rounds. One forty five. Tell you about Delgado first. L Jaguar. He is the Jaguar. Four and three with one no contest. Two knockouts. Never been finished in a fight. He's won two straight and four of five. Uh, has not lost since November twenty nineteen. All oh, the good old days. Uh, used to fight at one fifty five twenty fourteen pro MMA debut. Tom Sin six and two with four knockouts. He's been knocked out once. Three and two in LFA. He's won four or five, including, uh, but he did lose his last fight. Used to fight at lightweight as well. 17 years younger than Delgado, an inch taller. That may have, that may be the biggest, is that the biggest gap we've seen? What it is he, 20, is he 23 and Delgado's 40? Yeah, I'm going to check here. Um, I'm going to make sure my math's right because I'm very tired here. Yeah, Delgado's 38 and he's 21. Is that, 21. that be right? Yeah, that wow. is right. Tom, Thompson has been like a hot prospect for a minute. And, and yeah. you know, you're going to see that in the line. Negative 650, negative 700 here wouldn't Oof. surprise me. And then as the fight gets closer and closer, you'll see four digits. I'm almost positive you'll see four digits on Isaac Thompson. Um, Only and, if you and tell for, everyone to get in on him. Yeah, and, and well, I'm not going to tell everybody to get in on him. He's a four-to-one <laughs> favorite. I do think he's going to win. I'm going to take Thompson here. Delgado. Uh, he's a Diaz guy. He's an El Nino training center. Uh, mm -hmm. So he, he works with Melendez and Diaz and he fights like one, you know, his hands are low. Uh, he's trying to like punk you out as he's, you know, throwing strikes with you. And, and he's got like that attitude about him. But the thing about that, that's not going to work with Thompson is first of all, if you watch Thompson's loss, it, it was that the kids clearly still got some room to grow in terms of wrestling and in jujitsu defense. Uh, and then they gave him a guy who seemingly just wants to have a, Nate Diaz style fight where he just boxes for the vast majority of it, despite maybe having a jujitsu advantage. Um, and with Thompson, the thing I like about him in terms of striking, first of all, very good forward pressure, but he does it in two different ways. Number one, really good footwork, which obviously is necessary for any kind of forward pressure. And then the other thing he does is he's really great at disrupting timing. Um, he's one of those guys who will throw a one, two, but with like a weird hesitation in the middle of it, that almost lets his opponent like, you know, if they cover up real quick, it almost lets them like uncover their head. And then the two comes like a second after. Um, and so like that, that those hesitations and not punching from like a rote uh, timing perspective makes him really difficult to deal with. And with a guy with his hands low in his defense, kind of like already being suspect, you know, like it's going to be more difficult for him to roll away from combinations when like that second punch isn't coming when he thinks it is. So I like Isaac Thompson quite a bit right here. You know, they're clearly giving him a fight to get him back on the right feet, right? He's six and two. Uh, you know, he, he had won five in a row before he lost this last one. And now they're giving him a four and three 38 year old man. Like th this is the, the get right fight for Isaac Thompson. And I think he does exactly that. Uh, is he uh, going to be a contender series or UFC fighter in the future? I, th I think they think so. I, I, and you know, I, I think the big question about that will be, can he put together some really spectacular finishes? <laughs> um, Cause you know, like he, he's got a couple in there, but like something spectacular once or twice would really help him before next year. Also like just showing he shored up that defense in terms of grappling and wrestling. I think that would go a long way because how he looked in his last fight, I would say not anytime soon, but if, you know, who knows he beats Delgado here. He puts together two more wins in early 2025, you know, one of them against the guy who can wrestle and grapple, you know, a decent amount. Sure. You could see him in contender series next year. And then uh, he'll have a chance for Dana White to tell him that he's too young. So perfect. Perfect. <laughs> um, all right. Come in event time. Middle uh, band of weights. Aziz Osorbek Ulu from Kyrgyzstan. Felipe Estevez from Brazil. Uh, Estevez is 10-1. Three knockouts, five submissions. He's been knocked out once. 
one in LFA. He's won three straight. He's not lost since July of 2021. Used to fight at 125. That would be flyweight by my math regional champion as well. Ulu. Ulu, it means son of, right? So it's real. Yeah, so it's sort of also back. Also back. Yeah. yeah, I think what he goes by. Yep. Al, no, he goes by Ale Khan is his nickname. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I looked it up. I, I've got nothing for you. So <laughs> uh, I'm not Kurt, Kurt Sustanian, uh anyhow. So maybe one of our fans in Kurtzistan can tell us why his nickname is Ale Khan. Two Isn't words, it Kyrgyzstani? Kyrgyzstani. Yeah, I, I put the Indian at the end of it. <laughs> Kyrgyzstani. I think so. What, one of the people that live there, you know, one of those places. Um, this man is 19 and 8. No matter what his name goes, is, he's 19 and 8. Nine knockouts, four submissions. He's been knocked out twice, been once. This is his LFA debut. He's won three straight and nine of 10. Won his last fight TKO. He's not lost since June of 2021. Used to fight at Featherweight. Multiple region championships on his. Mantle. Correct. Get shirt. Sportsgivenpuggins.com slash store. Get sticky with it. Uh, two inches of height over Estevez. So I think or 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 back uh, is going to be a little bit of a favorite here. We'll say like negative 175 plus 150 on the return for Estevez. And I'm going to say I'm going to take a stab on a dog here. I like Felipe Estevez in this fight for a couple of reasons. Uh, I watched Osor Beck's recent fight because I wasn't really familiar with him. You know, you see the Kyrgyzstani flag. You see the Ulu at the end of it. Um, you see his name looks like Muktabek Orobai's name. And you're like, right. oh, man, this guy's probably a beast mode wrestler. He's got no interest in going to the ground. Um, so much so, I once watched him knock a guy down and stand over him and wait for him to stand back up so he can <laughs> fight him again. Um, like, he's just not interested in, in engaging in any kind of groundwork. Um, he is kind of a fun striker. Most of it is countering, though. And that's kind of why I like Estevez in this fight. Estevez is is aggressive and, like, gets in your face and throws a lot of feints. And I think against the guy who, you know, primarily lives off of the counters, those lots of feints are going to, like, draw out a lot of those counters. And I think Estevez can have a lot of uh, success there. Also, Ozerbeck ate a ton of leg kicks in the fight uh, I was watching, which is either his last one or second to last one. Um, and eating so many leg kicks in there is a bad sign because Estevez does throw a really nice leg kick. And Estevez also is, I would say, the the other X factor that I like him here, if he does in fact come in as an underdog, is he, he kind of has these like sneaky good trips. Um, I'm trying to remember who did it in the UFC. Was it Zabit Magomed Sharapov who used to do that one where he would step by the guy and uh, like catch his shoulder and like basically like trip him uh with like yeah, a leg I think high. So. Sounds, yeah, yeah like yeah. estevez has got that trip down like i've seen him in like two or three separate fights hit that that like zabit trip um which is like it's probably got a technical name sorry that i don't have it judo has zabit trick um but trip. yeah like but like that thing that zabit used to do all the time where he'd like he'd do like a, a karate jump leap in and throw his foot behind and, and catch the shoulder and so estevez has like kind of sneaky trips in addition to what having what I think is a power advantage, what I think is an aggression advantage, and just having a style that I think is good to fight against counter strikers. So um, I think Orserbeck being the guy from Kyrgyzstan, being the guy with a lot more experience, being the guy who's kind of got the flashy striking, I think all of that will make him the favorite here. But I do really like Estevez here if he does come in as a dog. All right, Estevez, and you're saying his name properly too, which is good. <laughs> you put some respect on his name. Yeah, right, I tried. I tried. So, so you're thinking around the one plus 150? Is... I think like plus 150. It wouldn't surprise me to be higher, right? Like, yeah, we see that sometimes. You know, I ca I call it usually the Russian rub. And granted, uh, you know, yeah. Osterbeck is not from Russia, but like you know, Kyrgyzstan has kind of gotten a uh, reputation of being a really good place for MMA right now, especially like young prospects. We're seeing guys pop up. Um, Salta Baldiev was supposed to be on contender series this year. Oral by got signed direct, you know, like there's, there's a lot of guys coming out of Kyrgyzstan right now, not just, you know, women, which we have already had two in the UFC, but you know, a lot of dudes too. So maybe that draws it up a little bit, especially because like Felipe Estevez is just like a, you know, generic Brazilian name. Uh, and, and like, you know, maybe doesn't have that hype. I think a lot of our uh, listeners um, know something else as a Russian rub, uh, but if you want to call it a Russian <laughs> rub, then so be it. It's a Russian. Rub. That's that's uh yeah. It's, uh, I'm talking about a very different thing than maybe yeah, some of our listeners. Probably the, some of our listeners. All right, before we move on, we're all on the same page with this one. Rhythm, right? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Except for the spelling. Some of you newcomers may not know the spelling. It's R I T H M M. That's a really nice graphic I'm looking at here. I, I never look at the graphics when I'm reading these ads. All right, 
Anyhow, have you ever wanted to create your own sports betting model for football? Do you even know what a sports betting model is? SGPN's proud partner, Rhythm, is the number one AI-powered sports betting platform that helps provide bettors of all levels the ability to build custom predictive betting models in seconds and get predictions for betting on money lines, spreads, totals, and props. Build your own model, copy one of the top performing models from the leaderboard, or press build a model for me. And Rhythm gives you predictions for every game and player prop and also has a myriad of stats research and trend analysis to give you even more betting insights the rhythm college football uh analytics had everyone in on colorado versus north dakota state i'm gonna say that was week one or zero and a half under 59 and a half and it was this week cash for y'all so check it all out claim your seven day free trial today by going to sports gambling podcast.com slash rhythm at sports gambling podcast.com slash r-i-t-h-m-m and of course we are brought to you by Game Time. And a reminder that Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. But of course, it's not just MLB. They got MMA, they got UFC, which I guess is MMA, right? They got concerts, they got other sports, uh, last minute deals. If you wait till the last minute, you can save up to 60%. Uh, on whatever kind of tickets you're buying. They also have flash deals. So check it all out so you don't miss out. You don't want to FOMO here. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code SGPN, also known as SIGPIN, for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code SGPN for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, ladies and gents, lady, I guess one and a half is ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Main event. A couple guys we have spoken of before on this here show. This is for not for a flyweight title. It's for they're just fighting for pride and and some money. Uh, Mark Klamako from United States of America versus Victor Diaz. Three five minute rounds, 125 pounds. Diaz is Pasoka is the nickname. Remember we've talked about this before. Do you remember what it is? It's like a peanut butter chocolate treat, yes. right? Mm, yeah. Yum yum yum. Peanut can yeah <laughs> peanut type candy like the inside of a. Uh, Reese, it, Reese is what I've seen it described as, okay. which sounds good to me. Um, 12 and three, one knockout, seven submissions. He's never been finishing a fight. He's making his LFA debut in the main event here. Uh, he's won six of seven, including his last fight via submission. The one loss in that stretch was on the contender series, and it was to Kevin Borjas. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, used to fight at Bantamweight, two inches of height over Klamako, four inches of reach. Klamako is 10 and two, two knockouts, one submission. He's been knocked out once. A uh, 4-1 in LFA. He's won four of his last five, including his last fight. He went 1-1 one one in the road to UFC. 1-0 no in Bellator. Seven years younger than Diaz. He lost on road to the UFC to Ray Tassura, too. Right. In case, yep. uh, those of you guys are wondering. And, and no, that's... Sh no, uh, yeah. no shame in that. No shame yeah, in that. No. It's kind of the same for Victor Diaz and Kevin Borjas, although right. Borjas hasn't necessarily had the greatest run in the UFC, though, has he? Um, I'm going to say Klamako was the favorite here. Um, with both of them having losses on road or, or contender series, maybe that line stays close. Um, and, and, you know, they got similar records. Maybe, maybe those lines stay close. We're talking about like negative mm, 145 or something like that on Clamaco. And I'm going to take Clamaco here for sure. Uh, Clamaco's losses are like upsetting because like he was probably one fight away from the UFC in every single mm -hmm. one of them. But here's the thing is Clamaco's wrestling is already UFC caliber, in my opinion. Now, granted, losing to Ray Tatsura, it didn't look great in that fight, but whose wrestling looks good against Ray Tatsura's? And if you look at some of his other wins in LFA, right? Like he beat Miguel Sanson. Miguel Sanson was out wrestling um, our boy on Ho in that fight. And so like for Klamako to be, you know, clearly out wrestling, you know, Miguel Sanson, that's worth something. He out wrestled Cody Davis, who pretty much like, that dude is just like a tiny beast mode wrestler in the LFA flyweight division. So for, again, Mark Klamako to have sort of just taken it to Cody Davis in the wrestling shows you how high level wrestling he is. And then the reason I like that against Victor Diaz is, is if you watch Diaz's fight with uh, Borjas, he had none of the striking to be anywhere near Borjas. Borjas pieced up his face, had him swelling all over the place. His only hope was takedowns and trying to hold Diaz down. He didn't even, or uh, hold, holding Borjas down. He didn't even necessarily have really good jujitsu on the top. He didn't have really good control. He, like Borjas just kept standing up. And that tells me, you know, like maybe some of the takedown game there is for Diaz. But like, if he's going to get outstruck by Klamako, like it's not a sustainable goal 
to out wrestle Mark Clamaco for 15 minutes. Uh, is it, uh, yeah, they only do 15 minutes, even if yeah. it's a, as long as it's yeah. not a title fight. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a sustainable goal to try to out wrestle Clamaco for 15 minutes. So, yeah, of course, I'm going to go Clamaco here. I'm hoping that line stays close enough that makes the money line itself just look playable. All right. Let's give you a recap, but don't you go anywhere yet. Gummy's got more winning picks for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Clamaco, Estevez, Thompson, Bogoso, because he can't quit short. Hey, short king. You took a short king. Yeah, Beautiful. short king. And <laughs> Alan, an old guy that Dana White's not interested in. So hopefully Alan has a, uh, not even that old. a time machine or <laughs> uh, anti-aging, re- reversing um, serum. All right. Uh, that's your picks for the uh, the full breakdown. Now Gumby's got lightning round picks, which one of our one of our listeners or viewers gave us this idea, which was a good idea. Zap, bang, boom, lightning round. I think they even, he even gave us a name for it, didn't he? Whoever it was. Yeah, I think he gave us a name for it too. Fantastic. I wish, shout, shout out to whoever you are. If you're yes. the one who did it, put it in the comments. Yes. Uh, we'll start Raise giving your you hand. credit. We'll start giving you credit. Like yeah, like John. Jong. Yeah, you'll get the, the Hungry Man Jong uh, treatment. Mm. Um, I, uh, by the way, hit a plus 320 underdog on my lightning round picks for Bellator, by the way. Oof. Jordan, Jordan, not human Newman. Uh, you know, shout out to him. Yeah, just uh, fast forward to that that fight a few <laughs> a few hours ago <laughs> that's great um i got three for you this time i'm usually uh just hitting you with two lightning yeah. graphics. i got three because i i just couldn't uh, narrow it down i like too many of them the first one i like shaler lad uh he's making his pro debut after 10 amateur fights 10 and 0 is an amateur i don't know what the line's gonna look like here but it's aspen lad's little brother this dude's wrestling in in ground and pound is pretty damn good uh and he's super young so it looks like he's getting better and faster all the time also he's like how many times do we have like fun light heavyweight prospects i feel like that never yeah. happened we're usually like oh a zero and zero light heavyweight i bet he's fat uh this guy's like in shape and like kind of fun and uh so i'm, I'm excited about shayler lad uh another one i'm gonna go with apune pegoa uh we talked about him a while ago he used to show up on main cards lfas but He's had a couple of rough fights in there. He's down to being four and two. Maybe you find some value on his name there, but he's like a super fun striker. I think uh, he could get back in the win column here. And especially if you can get a decent number on him, we'll uh, dip into that one. And the last one I'm going to take is Hobson Jr. Uh, Hobson Jr., a Brazilian prospect, very good finishing instinct. Uh, If he wobbles you a little bit, he's either on the choke or the TKO. And like, he doesn't discriminate. Like he kind of looks for the right moment for both of them. Like if a guy you know, winds up hitting his, his palms on the mat. He goes for the back. And if the guy looks like he's going to recover, he hits him with an uppercut. It's, it's like really great instincts in terms of that. So I like Hobson Jr. there. Again, all of these lightning round picks kind of contingent upon whether or not those numbers are, you know, halfway playable. But I think all three of them should cruise. All right, there you go. You are all set, ladies and gentlemen, for LFA 192. Uh, we, of course, are not done with you. Well, we're, we're through with you now, but we're not through with you yet. Uh, tomorrow. The next day, the next day, yeah, we we just started the week, so we got you got a full week of us. Uh, hopefully, you're on YouTube, so you can see our pretty faces. If if you're not, or if you're even if you're not interested, if you can hit subscribe, smash it, even if you want, that would, that would be great. We are creeping ever so close to the 1,000 barrier, and then we can make that evil empire pay us money. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so make sure you hit subscribe on YouTube. Uh, thank you for doing that in advance. Uh, what else can you do? You can obviously hang out in the discard with us. Uh, it's always jumping in there, especially when events are going on. A lot of one championship fans in there. So if you're into one championship, we don't talk about it too often because they don't really do too many MMA bouts, but there's a lot of one championship fa- fans in there, which shows that we got a lot of hardcore. So that's uh, sportsgumbypodcast.com slash discord. Twitter, SGPN MMA. He's Gumby Vreeland. I'm Jeff Fox, writer there and on Instagram. Get in my sub stack, enter my weekly pick em contest. Uh, you can enter that for free. Or if you want some of my premium content, a lot of uh, gambling stats and articles like that, you can check it all out at moneymma.substack.com. Gumby, Top Turtle, my favorite podcast other than this one. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, and the other one I host. But my favorite podcast that I don't host <laughs> regularly. I forgot the one with my son is a good one, too. Um, who, who's on it this week? Uh, we're actually talking to Mark Clamaco, the main event of uh, this year LFA card. Uh, and then we are also talking to Elijah Smith, who, do you remember Gilbert Smith on The Ultimate Fighter? Mm, he was on the no. season with Uriah Hall and uh, Calvin Gastelum. No, I didn't watch that season. I, I saw uh, Uriah Hall 
his vicious knockout. I didn't knockout, watch yeah. that season. No. What does that mean? I wasn't, um, no one watches Ale- No one watches I, contenders. I, I do. Uh, but no, anyway, do. Elijah Smith is Gilbert Smith's son, who is now on Contender Series, Whoa, uh, which crazy. made me feel immediately old yeah. and was a very fun interview. <laughs> yeah. I bet your wife knows who they are, though. Is she still she does, a yeah, tough devotee? Like, yeah, I was like, hey, do you know Gilbert Smith? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, his son's fighting on Contender Series. She was oh, like, for oh. real? Yeah. This isn't a joke. Wow. No, she knew who he was. That's crazy. It's one of her favorite seasons. <laughs> exactly. And and the sport is in her name. I realized that fairly recently. Her name, the sport is, her name spelled with the sport in it. Yeah, MMA. Yeah. yeah Why do you think you I married her? There, that's <laughs> what I was going to, I was going to tell her. Wait a minute. I, tip, I, I, I just realized something. Anyhow, um, what else do you need to do? Oh. We are sportsgamblingpockets.com. Obviously, we are up to our ears, up to our eyes in NFL uh, coverage. So all you people love NFL, I'm sure. So check out our site for that, sportsgamblingpockets.com. Every other sport as well. Uh, Gummy and I do daily articles on there, as as do everyone there. Plus, all our podcasts can be found there. All our contests, our giveaways, our discounts, we give you all that good stuff. Uh, we're also sportsgamblingpockets.com slash store, so you can get yourself swagged out, and sportsgamblingpockets.com slash Patreon, so you get yourself some uh, extra uh, extra content in your orifices. We'll be back tomorrow. Silent Killer, Jeff Fox, and Mini Vreeland. Bye-bye. <laughs>